Hi, I'm back here again in Google Sheets and in this video I'm going to be taking another look at the CRM system which I built in Google Sheets and covered in a previous series of videos. Since I released that series uh, I've made quite a few changes to the way the CRM system works and the way it looks and most importantly I've made changes to the way you can import data into it. So I'll cover that first. If you haven't seen my previous videos where I discuss how that CRM system was built, uh, you can go ahead and check that out in my previous videos. I'll put those links in the description. But uh, for now I'll assume you're fairly familiar with how all of that worked. Um, you'll see that the main sheet here looks a little bit different. Uh, it is functionally the same, but if you take a look at the item names here, you can see that there are no hyperlinks and there are only two sheets. There's main and template. There are no customer sheets as yet. So one of my biggest problems or biggest challenges with the previous system was um, actually populating all of the different sheets with data. Um, it was very, very tedious, especially when the customer count was over a couple of hundred that was quite a lot of data to transpose um, and so I thought I'd write a script which would do that for me. Um, the script works on the premise that you have all of your customer data on a single sheet or in a single range. Um, for example, each customer has a single line which is completely populated with data that's specific to them. Um, so I've just got some demonstration data in here uh, that were just random entries, um, but each of these lines should represent um, a particular customer's uh, data. And what we want to do is take all of that data, create a sheet, transpose the data to it, and then create a hyperlink to replace this name here, and then get rid of all of this ancillary data. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate how that works now. If you take a look up the top here, you see I've got my script editor open and this function that I built should clone each of those lines and transpose the customer's data to the new sheet. I'll go ahead and run that now and if we take a look at the main sheet you'll start to see sheets pop up down the bottom there with new names and you'll also start to see hyperlinks populated into this second column here. Now it's going to stop after the second one, that's just because I've told it to. So coming back to my sheet, if we navigate to one of those customers and click on the go button, it will take us to that sheet and you can see that the data has been transposed to the cells which I defined. It's also transposed any notes, any cell notes, so you can see that On the main sheet, cell 4 has a note attached there. And that note has also been transposed to the new sheet. So I'll go ahead and make a quick change to my script here. And we'll create a couple more rows. And I'll run that guy again. And you'll see that two more sheets get created, whereas the initial two sheets that already exist have simply been skipped over. Um, so if you need to run that same script more than once, it's not a problem. You're not going to create duplicate sheets. Uh, it'll skip over anything that it already has a record of. And now we have two more customer records which work exactly the same and their relevant data has been transposed as well. Now this script is going to require a little bit of work if your destination cells are not the same as mine or if there's more data. At the moment it's only set to transpose four columns of data. That's these guys down here. Um, but if you have 
20 or 30 columns of data. All you're really doing is making duplicates of these variables and then making duplicates of each of these lines here. I've added some instructions on how that works, but I'll also put some more detailed instructions in the description where I've shared this code. I've also built another function down the bottom here, which you can use just in case you do run that script and it creates too many sheets or doesn't do them in the right way and you don't want to have to go through and delete each one manually. This will go ahead and delete everything on the spreadsheet, which is not main or template. So I'll do that now. And those extra sheets are gone. It doesn't delete the hyperlinks, but that's not really a big deal. If I go ahead and run the sheet builder again, those sheets will once again be regenerated. So not only is that a quick way to create all the different customer uh, sheet entries, as well as populate your main list with hyperlinks, um, it will also transpose data if you can actually get a sheet that contains all of that data for that customer on a single line. And hopefully that will save you a bit of work. One of the other changes I've made is that rather than using your data validation to choose from a list, and then populate some other cell with a hyperlink um, so that you can link to that customer. I've just created a button here which is linked to a script uh, and it will navigate to whatever um, sheet is in this range if there is a sheet for that, uh, that particular customer. Um, if that contains invalid data, it simply won't do anything. That's a fairly simple script. It's just this guy here. It'll simply navigate to whichever sheet name is in the cell next door. I've done the same thing for the home button. The code for that hasn't changed, but I've put a nicer looking button on there. And I've done the same thing for the form submit button as well. I really got tired of looking at those blue buttons. Um, these are just icons that I found somewhere on Google that uh, I like the look of and uh, yeah, those can be imported as pictures in just the same way as we created the buttons. So you can go to insert, drawing, And here is that drawing that I've just inserted. You can put that somewhere on your sheet and then assign a script to it if you want to. Personally, I think using icons or images like that uh, looks quite a lot nicer than the old blue buttons that I created in the previous system. The form that's used for text to fill out details of their customer interactions is functionally the same. However, I have replaced the buttons that I had down here with another kind of data validation. So that's just a drop down of tech names. Here is a drop down of uh, duration and a drop down for resolution. And I'll show you how that data validation works. If I right click on the cell and scroll down to data validation. You'll see that rather than listing from a range, which is what I've done for most of my previous data validation, I'm using list of items, which gives you a field here and you can just enter whatever uh, variables or whatever item names you want to enter, separated by a comma,
and that's what will show up in your drop down. Using data validation like that also means that we don't have uncommitted data sitting in a cell that's currently highlighted. Uh, so if I go ahead and submit that now, the script is able to successfully grab hold of that data and drop it into the call history log, whereas previously there was a little bit of an issue with that. All three of these cells use data validation in the same way. They're really just a list of items that you can populate with whatever you want. The call history log is also functionally the same as in the previous videos. Um, it will continue to push those customer interactions down by one row and put the most recently logged call at the very top. My template sheet where all of this formatting is drawn from only has 30 rows here but you can see that as customer interactions are added those rows are added onto the bottom. Creating each sheet with only 30 rows and only up to column R means that as we transpose this data onto new sheets we don't have to worry about hitting that um, that uh, 2 million cell limit that Google Sheets has and taking another look at uh, my cloning function you might like to uh, set this value here to something like 180 and that means it will either create only 180 sheets or the total number of rows in the source sheet uh, whichever number is smaller so that we're not exceeding that 200 sheet limit um, and I just chose 180 so that it gives you a bit of flexibility in adding new sheets in the future without running into that limit too quickly. If you are working with more than say 200 customers then you're going to want to create more than one sheet which contains customer names um, but there really is no issue at all navigating between two completely different sheets and you can split that customer data alphabetically for example one sheet might contain customer data from A to M uh, and the next one contains from N to Z a little bit further down towards the end of this function there is this guy here which is used to clear all of the redundant data from the main page after the information has been transposed at the moment I've just got that range set to a single cell um, but if I were to expand that range to cover for example this range here then after the script is finished creating all of those sheets it will remove all that extra data that you don't need. Whether or not you use that to clear the data on this main sheet after transposing all of the data is up to you um, but it's a good idea to make sure you do have a, a backup of that data if you intend to do it that way just in case you don't quite get everything you want on the first pass and you need to delete those sheets and run it again. So that's about it really for this video just a few changes that I've made um, that I think make the sheet work a little bit better and it will certainly allow you to transpose your customers data quite a lot quicker if you need to do that. So I'll make a copy of this sheet available in the description as well as links to the code in my script here so that you can make use of those as you need it. Um, if you do have any questions go ahead and leave me a comment. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.